leading up to the passing of the abortion legislation in Ireland, much of the debate was focused on the legislation being necessary in order to safeguard women's lives. Despite Ireland without abortion being among the world leaders in safety for pregnant women, abortion campaigners and the media continued to push the idea that the legislation was necessary in order to protect women's lives in pregnancy. Much of this hysteria came after the death of Savita Halepanavar, who died from complications of a septic miscarriage, but whose death was exploited by abortion campaigners. The public were fed a narrative which claimed that Savita died because of Ireland's pro-life laws, even though the subsequent inquiries found that her death was caused by a superbug infection, which was unfortunately missed by hospital staff. After the legislation passed, something significant happened, which stirred a lot of controversy and shed light on the abortion legislation, Savita Halepanava's tragic death and the role of the media in covering abortion stories. On the 23rd of August 2013, the Irish Times ran a front page story with the headline First Abortion Carried Out Under New Abortion Legislation and the subheading Case Similar to That of Savita Halepanava. As like Savita, this patient had also developed signs of sepsis in her pregnancy. It was triumphalist in tone, claiming that a woman, pregnant with twins, had had an abortion at the National Maternity Hospital after she had developed signs of infection. The article drew a number of similarities to the death of Savita Halepanava, who had also developed signs of infection, but claimed that, unlike Savita, this woman's life had been saved because her doctors had intervened under the new abortion legislation. Effectively, the legislation was glorified and the article suggested that, had abortion been legalised sooner, then perhaps Savita too would be alive. The story went around the world. Twin babies had been aborted, the paper said, to save a mother's life. Legalised abortion had saved a mother. But very quickly, the story started to fall apart and the controversy began. On the very same day the article was published, the Department of Health issued a statement saying that the new legislation had not yet been enacted, meaning that the doctors caring for this woman were acting under the same laws and guidelines that had been in place at the time of Savita's death. Questions began to be asked of the hospital and of the Irish Times. Had the doctors acted illegally? How was it that this pregnant woman was treated for the same condition that had caused Savita to die when Savita wasn't? Could it be then that Savita's death was a lot more to do with staff missing her infection than to do with the law on abortion, despite the fact that the Irish Times told the world she had died because she was refused an abortion? How could the Irish Times, the same paper who broke the story of Savita Halepanava, be so incorrect in their reporting? Could it be that they were also wrong in their initial coverage of Savita's death? After the memo was released by the Department of Health, Barrister at Law and Medical Doctor Simon Mills went on record to say that the procedure carried out at the National Maternity Hospital was perfectly legal irrespective of whether the new law had come into place or not. Nobody disputed his claim, and no penalisation, punishment or sentences were handed down to the doctors involved nor to the hospital involved. After all the statements it seemed clear, women like Savita, who develop infections during pregnancy, can and were always able to be treated in Ireland, even if that treatment resulted in the loss of the baby. But there was even more to the story. More questions began to be asked about the case involved. Doctors strongly criticised the breach of patient confidentiality and that the mother would be clearly identifiable from the information printed by the paper. But, in another bizarre twist to the story, the hospital then released a statement saying that the case described in the Irish Times had not even happened, and even more questions were then asked of the Irish Times. By now the story had become very strange. First, the Irish Times reported a story on the first abortion carried out under new abortion legislation, only for the Department of Health to later confirm that the new legislation was not even in place. Then, the hospital where the abortion supposedly took place confirmed that no such case even existed. As the story unravelled, it became increasingly difficult to determine where the truth ended and the lies began. Was this a complete fabrication or was it irresponsible journalism? Did the Irish Times deliberately overlook the facts in a blind effort to promote abortion? Whatever the case, the newspaper seemed neck deep in a controversial story about an abortion that never happened. One week later, the Irish Times retracted the story, stating, as the hospital had said, the case described did not happen, but the admission was hidden in a small paragraph on page 7, not blazoned on the front page like their original headline. So where then did this story come from? Perhaps we will never know, but perhaps we will also have learned to be a little sceptical the next time we read an abortion controversy in the Irish Times. The paper that created a narrative that claimed Savita Halepanava died because of pro-life laws and a Catholic ethos, even though inquiries found that sepsis and medical misadventure was the cause. 
Has the National Broadsheet become a campaigner for abortion? And has this led to serious misreporting and misinformation around the issue of abortion? If so, perhaps we need to look elsewhere for the truth behind the headlines.